thinking warrior mode. He was just going for it. And you could see that that was giving everybody else a lift. He was charging through. Yeah. And just, and then, but then backing it up in defense as well. He wasn't just, he was just latching onto a ball and running straight. He was working hard for that. And yeah. consistently as well. It wasn't like he was just doing the old highlight reel. It was throughout the game. He just kept, and he is someone who you kind of don't notice because you just expect he's one of those similar in a way to James Graham can be that he just, he keeps working. So you kind of switch off to it. Yeah. And it, but he's, he's in there and he, he's his spin, phenomenal. It's his spins on contact that he's brought into his game. Like when he knows he's one-on-one with a bloke, he'll, he'll spin in, into contact and kind of roll off them with his shoulder and it's giving well, him if you think, the fact if that you he's going to land force. on his front then when he does get tackled a bit from yeah, behind. Yeah, but if you think of that force front, spin, got spinning off the back of that. Yeah, and you think that force spinning at you, yeah. that's going to not, that's going to, as much as anything, as a defender, that's going to mess you up because you're not going to be really sure which way is left or right well, that was and where you need to put your arms. the differences between the quality and the size, I thought, in this game. Saints were so much more committed in everything they did. They hit the ball faster when they were carrying it out of their own end, and they got more players into the tackle when women and, were. And their forwards just made Roby's job easier. But Roby, Roby was, was yeah. just again he's fantastic. And people saying, "Oh, we should be getting, oh, we should be getting worse." Now. He's not. He's getting better. He's yeah. got, now he's got experience and he knows what he's doing. He's just what improving. an absolute nonsense fluff piece in the papers uh, about like not considering retiring who's even asking him that question who's, can hang who's pen up. Thinking the absolute he's gonna, nonsense he's if you're not asking gonna, James Roby about retirement it's too good <laughs> and not only that but he's got he's potentially got sick if he wants if he still wants it and it's, it's the only question is, is would it be his motivation will he eventually get bored of it because I, frankly, I think I think you start spelling him in a year or two's time, like or even like yeah. next year, like they did with he's, Cunningham at that stage. Be, but he's he's someone who's got quite happily, four years in him. I was going to say six. He could play for six years, yeah. I quite just, comfortably. Is 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 fantastic? Um, because he'll adapt. Know, as he's shown, he's, he'll adapt his game when he's had injuries and whatever, and he's had to adapt himself to play within himself. He's done that. And he'll he'll adapt his game and he'll bring him. You know, he because you know he could even just play as a sort of middle sort of smaller middle kind of player as well for spells I mean yeah, well, he could... he's more than capable of doing that if he needs to not be kind of jumping getting bending down so low so often <laughs> and jumping out of dummy half so often he's still yeah, going to be he in could and around loose, it, and it he's got an ability to be. tackle without having to hit hard but never let a guy go I, 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 everyone and it's the classic it's really. the classic Roby as well. Yeah. Is that he sees a defender that's slightly yeah. low low backpedaling, that's not quite gonna make it back, and he just goes for it. He commits, he darts, he's off, he's found yeah. a gap, and then he's and he's hit one of his big men. Thank you very much. And it's just it's fantastic to watch. And I yeah. don't get why anyone is here able to be down on him at all. He's just fantastic. He's he's, he's a player who we should be well, making there's, more there's of. There's Wigan fans who still hold on to that season he won Man of Steel when he was only playing they that Wigan fans will say he was only playing half the game. Actually, if you watch it, he played an hour every game because him and Cunningham would both be on the field for the last twenty minutes of yeah. almost every game Saints played that season. But um but we had Trent Barrett who kind of made our team from being absolute dog shite to being a a nearly team and Barrett was amazing that year and Wigan fans still hang on to that. I think we need to let it go. I think we need to acknowledge how great James Rowe is. Just like Leeds fans in particular, I find, are the ones that hate Sean O'Loughlin for some reason more than Saints fans. But Leeds fans need to let go of that as well, for example. But um, back to the, no, no, the no, game if, as well. If, if you're ever doubting James James Rowe, sit there and watch it. Watch him for a game. Go to a game and sit and just watch him. Don't watch anything else. Just, just track him yeah. for 10 minutes and you see all the work he does. See all the positions and all the looking around, all the work he does that when he hasn't got the ball in his hand, it's just phenomenal. And I was thinking this during the game, is he somewhat, should he be, well, it's a stupid question really, but how high up the man of steel list behind Ben Barber is he? Well, he's, he's probably second now that Jake Connor's not going to finish the season. The whole season looks like yeah. it's going to fizzle out, drift out a little bit. Um, when you're also tallying that Wigan's, best players like Sam Tompkins has probably been our most consistently good player and he has won a few games on his own but he hasn't sizzled as much as some of these other blokes have that we're going to talk that we've been taught that you you know we just listed off um 
and then at Warrington, I think their start was so slow, and maybe that's impacted on how much people have seen him on TV then as a result of that. So we haven't seen Ratchford when he's been absolutely golden recently. We haven't seen enough of Daryl Clark for him to get the accolades he probably should have been getting this season. We haven't um, seen Chris Hill doing things that aren't grabby enough. Exactly, yeah. So so I think there's a th- th- those are the guys that would be the conversation for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's... it's I'd be. I'm moving towards voting for Roby, rather than Barber. But I would. Well, you know my views on on people that have done things and and yeah. whether they should be in the, involved. Uh, back, back but anyway, to the game. Um, from a Wigan's perspective, John Bateman was relentless. Bateman. We moved him into the middle at 13, too late in the game. Um, he 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 offered something of a threat then because. You have to defend him all round, and you have to defend him until he's on the ground as well with John Bateman, um, because he's the best offloader in the league this year. Basically, is, is why. Um, but but that happened too late in the game, I think, and it, it meant that the chance of something unpredictable in attack went. So we were still playing this structured play, but it was too slow because there wasn't the dummy runners and stuff like that that I spoke about before that were threatening, and that meant it was easy to read. Blah 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 blah. Um, the two centres, you know, Sargentson is universally hated at, at Wigan. I, f- I feel it's harsh. Um, I, I, I sensed as soon as he didn't, as soon as the try didn't happen from when he got held up about ten minutes from time, even though it came a set later, uh, when he didn't, when he didn't score or didn't set up Marshall to score, I sensed that instantly the crowd were like, "What a bag of shit he is!" Even though he would put in an absolute solid shift, constantly beat his first man but never had anyone offering a, a line near him to get the ball off to when he had an arm three arm three he, he defensively he was absolutely sound i thought i thought the uh i thought hankinson um on his debut in super league offered a bit of a spark um he, he you know he beat the first man physically a lot of times um he was very pow- much more powerful than i was expecting maybe maybe he doesn't quite have a one-handed offload which is something he's going to have to work on a little but bit that's something you can train. That's something you can train, isn't it? Down, but there's something in there to work with, definitely. And I definitely um, thought, certainly defensively, when I was watching him in the first 20 minutes or so, I didn't notice him as a. He's no, come he, from he a lower one level. Or two tackles, but that's about it. His fitness wasn't. But that was mainly at all in that the was game, mainly was, later on in as well. It was not the towards was the a beginning. Tackle later on against Makinson, uh, sort of mid second half, where he absolutely nailed Makinson and. Um, and I thought, you know, and the whole crowd got up and I think he, he really endeared himself to the Wigan public in that performance. Um, so they were the sort of standouts from Wigan. I thought Tompkins was as threatening as he could be considering how easy it was to mark him, basically. And he doesn't make mistakes anymore. People need to recognise this about Sam, Tom, Sam Tompkins. He barely drops a kick now. Barely. And he's targeted. LMS was targeting him and he stopped oh, yeah. that challenge massively well. Because as well, you, you, know, you know with Tompkins that putting someone like LMS on him He's going to trying to wind him up, but to be fair to Tompkins, he didn't react to it. No, no, which is which way. in this game, but it is something yeah. that he, yeah, he he would have done, and you would have, and you kind of thought, it, and it's a legitimate tactic putting someone who is a wind up merchant yeah. like McCarthy Scars, but who is going to get into you and he's going to be just bloody annoying for eighty yeah. minutes. Yeah, and talk, whilst we're mentioning a few big hits, we've got to talk about the biggest hit of the game, which was the oh, Douglas. I love this. Uh, and Lee's weren't it? Who the hit on, on Tao Tai? Yeah, Tao Tai, bless him, <laughs> got up and wanted to take a carry two carries later to show that he was yeah. all right. He was not all right. He should not have been taking that carry. Someone should have stepped in. This is where our leadership maybe isn't working right as it stands with confidence low well this um, is where this is where you need you need a senior body in your pack who's going to say think at actually time, actually Tommy give it to me pitch. exactly yeah. yeah it's actually give it to me let me take it and, yeah. and he can be my dummy runner that's kind of and, and shepherd him through yeah even because there's a danger there where you where you come off a big hit and god knows i've did it enough times where you come off a big hit you want to prove yourself and then you go and do something stupid mm. you, either, either you give away a cheap penalty or you, you fluff and drop the ball or you do you know you do something you can get yourself carded by virtue trying too hard yeah yeah I, I think it's a summary for me on the game I suppose um, the, there's a difference between the sides in that Saints were able to 
execute far better, especially coming out of their own end, um, and especially, you know, their carries were more d- dynamic, their defence was more dynamic, but Wigan showed an attitude, a desire, um, a work ethic, and a scrambling ability that made me feel still proud. You know, I yeah, because one, one of the, one of the things that, for, but the one real of the difference in my notes, is, yeah, one of the things I put in my notes was that in that second twenty minutes, Wigan did really well to keep hold of Saints and stop them getting away because they could very easily have run away with it mm. and gone and maybe with tw- and gone in twenty points, thirty points up. Have, but yeah, it was yeah. Danny Richardson was relatively ineffective in this game. I think Tony Club laid a couple of legitimate legal perfectly brilliant hard hits on him just like LMS had did to Tompkins and stuff um, so yes yeah, so that was kind of the difference in the way the t- sides were on the pitch so Wigan were kind of chasing it and Saints were kind of forcing it um, but Wigan cancelled out Saints in in that aspect to a large extent but Saints took advantage of Wigan's mistakes and Wigan did not take advantage of Saints mistakes kind of was the crucial thing in the, in the scoreline for me um, That that's my summing up you know you, you're you're uh, it's your turn to sum up, I suppose. Yeah, no, I think exactly that. I think it was a good performance from Saints. Wigan did well to keep them as, as low down as they did and keep within distance. And I think, like you said, the way you said you felt proud of the of the performance and the scramble, I think that's, that is something you can take heart on moving into the same. But again, Saints just, they, they do look a league above everybody else don't they by some distance and this proved it you know first first place seconds this proved it yeah they they, they do they, they looked more dominant to us in this game than I think they did apart from maybe the middle 20 minutes of the derby uh, on Good Friday um, interesting though because we saw similar things last year and, and it, it, it dominance at this stage didn't mean dominance at the end of the season but the, the basically two wins officially away from lifting their first piece of silver they're going to lift the league leader shield probably before the they got a chance maybe to lift the challenge cup they'll have lifted the league leader shield by then if they get to the challenge cup final i would say so excellent um stuff from saints in that regard stats this game had the most total carries and total meters of any game so far this season saints had the better of it though 199 more meters at a huge two meters per carry better average gain wigan actually made one fewer handling error and conceded one fewer penalty but saints created far more chances with nine breaks to one wigan's one break came in that sam tomkins trying the 71st minute um by that point tommy makinson had been hauled down back from behind about four times by different wigan <laughs> players putting a, in an effort um individually tommy makinson eight tackle bus 234 meters two clean breaks he was i thought he was outstanding luke thompson 10 10 marker tackles so worked 10 marker to, that's a lot of work Nine tackle bus, 151 metres. James Roby, 49 tackles. Ten mark tackles, 115 metres. He's letting, his, he's letting his stand slips. 49 tackles, lazy. Come on, Roby, up your and game. And no tries or try assists. What a joke. Morgan yeah. Knowles with a try, 41 tackles, Dropping. two clean breaks. I think that yeah, that, that try was preventable, sadly. For Wigan, um, John Bateman, 166 metres, five successful offloads. Tom Davies, 197 metres, doing what he does. Dan Sargentson, eight tackle bus. Sorry, that's Dan Sargentson, who was rubbish, doesn't deserve to ever play for Wigan again. That, Garbage, that, that, one, that, that, eight tackle yeah. bus and 181 metres. Liam Marshall, 143 metres. Um, I've just had one thought on Saints that I've worked out when I want them, precisely when I want them to uh, lift the league leader's shield. It's when, when they play Cass. That's what you want. You want them to beat Cass and then get present <laughs> the uh, the league leader shield straight after, don't you? At, 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 at World at Cass, down yeah. the lane, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Friday night now. Um, mm. And it's... Uh, I know I was remarkably cheerful considering I was just talking about Wigan losing in the Saints game and you've already got your mard on and it's not even started. Hull KR 20, Warrington Wolves 34. 7,045 reasonable turnout for a Friday night there with a bit of distance between the sides. Liam Moore was the referee. Um, why just edging the first half 12 eight we're able to consolidate things a little bit we've got a view from both camps um from the fans so do you want to get us the wire view in first yeah so huffed and puffed for the majority of the evening and made a lot harder work of which should have been a relatively straightforward win cow were very spirited and Maguire put in a shift for them all night once we clicked into gear we pulled away and started to look comfortable still a lot of work to be done in the eights but to be good but good to be up in the mix for semi-final places yeah, that's Wire Joe. And Tom Andrews, uh, at Tom underscore HKR, who we heard quite a bit from, well, we talked quite a bit about what we heard from 
him <laughs> earlier on. He said, Rovers looked tired for most of that game. I love Mossy, but he was a passenger all game. Three carries for your biggest prop isn't good enough. Only to Rovers could a ref be the opposite team's best defender two weeks running. <laughs> Onwards to smash them. Black and white bastards with Tom Carney in the ranks. Shame Connor's not available to get a bubbler from... <laughs> 